Good morning, church family. As Pastor Josh said, my name is Pastor Mandy, and I have the privilege of leading our youth ministry, junior high and high school. Um, but also this year, God's taken me into a new realm of leading our young adults ministry as well. So it's been it's been a fascinating year of just being a part of so many um, new things with God. So I thought one of the perfect ways to um, start this service was to share kind of where God has taken me from. So I was born and raised in the church, and um, I was raised in an incredible youth group. My time in youth group was some of my most formative experiences. We had camps, of course, of course. We had small groups, and some of the girls that are were in my small group, they're still some of my best friends to this day. And of course, we had um, crazy theme nights. I remember so clearly one that was a um, movie or TV show dress night. So you got to dress as, you know, your favorite character from a TV show. So at the time, this is when I was in junior high, so don't judge me. Uh, my favorite show was Hannah Montana. I really thought that I was going to be a pop star, which is hilarious because I didn't sing in front of anyone in that um, capacity. So, okay. But I thought I was going to be a pop star. So I was like, okay, Ashley, we're going to dress up as Hannah Montana and Lola. Which one do you want to be? And she's like, uh, I get to wear a green wig? Great. I'm going to be Lola. I was like, cool. I'll get the blonde extensions and we'll be amazing. So in my junior high head, I thought we were, you know, looked identical to them. I recently found a picture of us, and this is the moment that we would share, but it's probably a good thing that we can't have a screen because it's embarrassing, guys. I did not look anything like Hannah Montana. Oh, my gosh. But those are the moments that youth group is made for, the embarrassing moments that you're able to look back on and be like, I did what? And be like, yeah, it was a wild and crazy time. But you know what? We were so close in those moments. The whole leading up to that theme night of me and my friend finding our costumes, it was such a great experience. So I've tried to carry the things that I grew up with into the youth ministry that we have here. And you know, if you had told me when I was in youth ministry, hey, you're preparing for a life in youth ministry, I'd be like, ha ha, so funny, so funny, I know. But God uses us in our experiences in unique ways. I didn't always want to be in youth ministry. In my head, youth pastors and even just the youth leaders had this very certain type. They were wild and crazy, super extroverted. I'm not extroverted. And they knew everything about the Bible. And I was like, I don't fit either of those categories. I'm not going to do it. No. So in college, when I went to Azusa Pacific University, I was given many opportunities to strengthen my leadership abilities. The first was I volunteered with an organization called Wildlife, which basically they do, it's, it's a junior high version of Young Life, if you are familiar with that word, but they do basically youth group on school campuses. So much fun. I think that is what really sparked my joy for youth ministry because I didn't realize, I don't know why, but I didn't realize that youth ministry could be a job. <laughs> I didn't realize I can hang out with kids and be crazy with them and have deep conversations and tell them about Jesus and get paid for it. So wildlife was my first real experience with youth ministry. Another experience I got to have while at APU was I got to be a D group leader, which stands for discipleship group. They're basically the on-campus small groups. And another thing I didn't think I was really entitled to do because I didn't know everything about the Bible. And, you know, I was like, I'm quiet. People don't really want to pour their hearts out to me. But I was surrounded by so many leaders encouraging me and empowering me and who God created me to be. And they said, no, God created you in a unique way to connect with people uniquely. So try it out. I mean, the worst thing that you can do, Mandy, is you can hate it and not want to do it next semester. And I was like, okay, that's... That's true. Um, but they really encouraged me to get outside of my head of this stereotypical youth leader that I had. And I was constantly comparing myself and saying, you're not enough. You're not that wild and crazy person that you expect. But God uses everyone's personality 
to glorify his kingdom. And that's one of the biggest things I learned from these leaders that God put in my life. If it were not for my love of my own youth group and the leaders in my life that were constantly encouraging me to grow as a leader, I would not be where I am today. You see, we have the experiences in life that we have access to and the influence of those around us and the choices that we make get us to where we are. And influential people in our life and our experiences with those people are so important. Think about your own life. Think about the formative moments that you've had in your life. Think about the people that maybe have influenced you in a specific and empowering way. Think about the experiences that you've had that have also influenced you to do or be the way you are. I am so grateful to be a part of Granite Creek Community Church because we value the youth here. We invest in the youth here. So when I, we were uh, talking about what today looks like, the first day outside, Pastor Josh said, we need to celebrate something. Let, let's name off, what do we have to celebrate? And I was like, listen, Josh, we just came back from youth camp. Can I brag on our youth kids and just talk about what God is doing in the youth group? And I know that not every one of you has had youth kids or will have youth kids in our youth group. But I still think that we can celebrate what God is doing in them because it's influencing all of us. So let's dive into my long list of bragging. Okay, our students had the opportunity to experience powerful worship at camps over the past many, many years. Every time we go to camp, it's always like, what's your favorite part? Worship. And for many years, since I got here, I think there was like a big four-year, five-year stretch where we did not have regular worship in our youth group. And let me tell you, it was kind of weird. I was like, okay, I mean, it makes sense because we're not just going to have, like, an awkward, bad singer because that's more distracting, you know, than having, like, a good, well-put-together band. It really is. Um, and you just don't want to force something like that either. You don't want to force the spirit to be somewhere where it's not. And at that season, the spirit was not in worship in our youth group. But one year at a winter camp, our students were really moved by the experience that they had to have at winter camp. And they said, we want this on Wednesdays. Why don't we have this on Wednesdays? It's like, well, God's never called us into having worship on Wednesdays. So we had a group of students that started their own worship ministry upstairs. Yeah, you can clap for that. Yeah. Some of them have even taught themselves how to play instruments so that they could be a part of the worship team. How insane is that? Insane in the best way, right? They have been influenced by several leaders encouraging them along the way. When they felt like, no, I can't do that, they had leaders behind them saying, yes, yes, you can. And look at our worship ministry now. Not just upstairs in our youth group, but we have youth and young adults down here now blessing us as a congregation. It is so rewarding to see that progress. To see students go from, uh, I just play in my bedroom, I just play in the garage, I don't, mm -hmm, I don't know, stage seems scary. Guys, being up here is scary. But they are doing the hard work because they see encouragement all around them. So thank you guys for being so supportive of our youth group in this process of worship. Granite Creek as a whole is being benefited by what is happening at youth events like camp. So if you feel like, I'm not part of the youth group, you're still being influenced by them because of the experiences that our youth students get to have. So speaking of winter camp, like I said, we just got back last Sunday from a amazing weekend at Camp Pondo up in Running Springs. We took 18 students with us. Raise your hand if you got to go to camp. Yeah, there we go, hands all around. 
Ask them how it went afterwards. It was incredible. I'm sure they have some fun stories spiritually and just, you know, relationally chaotically. It's great. Because camp is meant for the we're going to stay up till midnight moments. And I don't know what happens in the cabin stays in the cabin. I don't know. <laughs> so one thing I want to celebrate about camp is that we had three new students come with us, which is so exciting to me because camp is really with the moments where you get plugged in. I mean, you're living together 24-7. How could you not build relationships? Um, and then we had eight decisions to rededicate themselves to Christ. That's about a third. Yes, that's incredible. So please keep these students in prayer because being on the mountain is different than being at home, and at home is where the battles are happening. So continue to keep them in prayer. Another thing is that we have a growing community in the youth group, which is so exciting to say. We have about 30 regular students in the youth ministry, and over the past two years, I did this weird math where I went through our yearbooks, because we make youth, uh, youth group yearbooks. It's really cute if you want to see one. I'll show you one after service. But I was going through a yearbook, and I was like, okay, who wasn't here two years ago? And we have 12 new students that are now regulars that we didn't have coming two years ago. That is really good odds. That's about 50% of our youth group is new in the last two years. How cool is that? And this is just from our students inviting their friends because they see that they have a really great community and they want their friends to be part of that. How cool is that? Um, another number is that we have an additional 10 plus friends. They're not like the regular attending category, but they're off and on just from the last year alone. We have students that have become regular members of our young adults group. They're regular servers. You can look around pretty much any ministry and you can see our students integrated throughout it. Our students are bringers. They're doing the stuff, guys. So. I'm going to put some pressure on some people. I would love if you would raise your hand if you are here because a student came to youth group and invited you. I'm going to call people out. <laughs> I know for sure the Hoffmans and the Rivas family are here because of our students. I know, I know. Our students are making ripple effects throughout our church community. They take initiative on their own without me having to be like, do this, guys, do this. Uh, we have a student who started a small group outside of church. Right. How cool is that? A little Bible study. I was like, wait, back up. You, you're doing what? <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, we've had students sharing words of knowledge with strangers before because they just heard a prompting from the Holy Spirit and they said yes and took the risk. We've had students pray for people. We've had or students tithing of their own accord and having discussions about tithing. I never did that when I was in youth group. To brag on one from camp, um, I brought my phone, which I mean is fine because I'm the adult leader, and I had service, and so I do a lot of um, Spanish on Duolingo, and I was like, guys, I respect keeping the streak. If anyone needs to keep their Duolingo streak, you can use my hotspot, and we'll all keep our, our language streaks together. <laughs> it's an app where you can learn a language. <laughs> Pastor Josh, well, I'll, I'll teach you about my, my Duolingo ways later. So some of you guys understand how important the app streaks are, right? Keeping your Bible app streak, although you can do that without Wi-Fi. Um, so I was like, you guys can hook into my hotspot and we'll keep our streaks. I get it. I get it. And uh, one of my students came up and was like, Mandy, I forgot to tithe. Can I use your hotspot? I was like, are you kidding me? Of course you can. Yeah, it's incredible. I was like, things that I wouldn't really think about. I'm just, I'm just going to do that when I go home. But it's a value to our students to have these things. They take initiative. 
Last Friday, right here where you guys are sitting, we had an incredible worship night for our youth and our young adults. And we had about 35 students, and it wasn't just our students here, it was we connected with about um, three churches in our area to have this young adult night. And it was led by Noah, one of our young adults, previously uh, youth. Where is Noah? Yeah, make him, uh, make him blush. There we go. It was an incredible night. The Holy Spirit was there. Lives were changed. We prayed together. It was incredible. And it was all because a student took initiative, and they just wanted a worship night, and they made it happen. We are creating leaders here and people with a heart to serve. We'll see our students serving in VBS and our kids' ministry. They're at check-in. They just hang out and play with kids. We have students that graduate and become youth leaders. Thank you for, for being with me. I appreciate it. Um, we have young adults. They help me run. The, they pretty much run the group. I'm just like the uh, adultier adult that's like there. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much what my role is. But they pretty much take the initiative, they communicate with their peers, and they made this group happen, honestly. I have been wanting a young adult group here for the past few years. And being the youth pastor, I just can't wrap my head around doing all of it by myself. So this was the year that they were like, what can we do to make this happen? And guys, we made it happen. So... It's incredible to see them stepping up and into leadership. I could go on and on and on and on, bragging on our youth, celebrating with you what God is doing in our youth. And I am so, so thankful to be a part of a church that wants to see our youth plugged in. See, our students have a home in Kairos GCY, Granite Creek Youth. But here at Granite Creek, they're given permission to be a part of so much more. We're in this series called All In, and I wanna celebrate our students because our students are all in. The youth group only exists because of you guys. Like Mako mentioned last week, everything we do here at Granite Creek is funded from tithing. And our students don't have full-time adult jobs, even though we do have a few tithing, but it's not enough to sustain all of the things that we do in youth ministry. Um, I kind of was doing more math, and about every event approximately costs about $100. And that's not, our students can't cover that. So, which means that it's you guys that are helping provide them with these experiences that we then see ripple effects here in Main Church. So thank you guys for being so excited about what God's doing here at Granite Creek and pouring into it. Not knowing where your money is going, but just trusting that God is going to do something. And that was really my heart behind sharing what God's doing in the youth ministry, because you guys are funding it, and you don't necessarily know the fruit that is being um, created because of it. So I want to share and celebrate with you all that God's doing through you because of you. So thank you. So whether or not you realize it, you have an influence on our students. And likewise, our students also have an influence on you. So our topic for today is we are all influencers. Because I couldn't just brag on our youth. I have to like teach you guys something I'm told. So, here, so here's where we get into the actual Bible teaching. If you have your Bible, please open it to Proverbs 27. Um, Proverbs 27, 17 is where we're going to be. You may or may not have heard this verse before. It's a pretty well-known one that's on t-shirts sometimes. Uh, it is, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. This verse is often used to express the importance of being in community or being in relationship with people. Um, super, it's not random, but fun fact, it kind of doesn't have anything to do with what I'm going to say, but it is still fun about this verse. Um, in Bible times, what did they use iron to make? Swords, yeah, yeah. Um, what do we call our Bible? Our sword. our sword. What? What a crazy.
crazy correlation. So I think we could also read this as, as iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another, is that we sharpen one another th through biblical truths. Which is why this is, takes on a couple of levels, is that it's not just two friends hanging out together, sharpening each other. It's using biblical truths to sharpen each other through a Christian relationship. So I think we can take this another level and say that intergenerationally, we need one another. Which means that whether you're 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, we need each other. Fuller Institute over in Pasadena did a research study called Growing Young. Um, I highly recommend reading the book. It's got some fascinating statistics about the church over the last 10 years. But in this study, they discovered successful strategies to help connect young people to the church. In this study, they recognized the need for both the older and the younger generations in order to have a successful church. You can't have one without the other. Because the older generations, they tend to provide that wisdom and valuable experience. While the younger generation, they tend to provide the energy and the new ideas to drive the church forward. Both are needed. Otherwise, you know, I've heard some of our youth ideas and, you know, some of them are a little wild. So I have to be like, whoa, let's slam on the brakes a little bit. I love where we're going, but like, let's slow down, maybe turn the wheel a little bit. And then there we go. We got it. So we need both to succeed. This reminds me of a passage in Romans chapter 12. Romans 12, verses 4 through 5, Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. It's this idea that we all have a unique experience in this unique role, and if we're not there, we're not fulfilling a role that's so important. So know that your experiences are important. They can have an influence on people within this church. Everyone, no matter how old or how young you are, you have the ability to influence others. Amen. Our youth group verse is 1 Timothy 4.12. If I was me and I would ask our youth to recite this, but I'm not going to do that because memorization is not my strong suit. So, It is don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This verse was written by Paul to his disciple Timothy. Paul had a great influence on Timothy. This is the whole idea of what discipling is. It's Paul was pouring into Timothy and encouraging him. So this is the whole idea of discipling. So Timothy was planting churches, and he was probably around 30, give or take a few years at this time. And in this culture, people had a hard time respecting him because of his age. So sometimes we'll hear this verse, and I mean, I know we use it in youth group, but sometimes you'll hear it in like kids ministry or, um, or youth ministry, just this idea of youth and people not fully respecting you or believing that you can have an influence. And I think that when we look at what this verse is actually encompassing, it's this idea of that Paul invested time into Timothy's life, and he sees the fruit that he can have. And when everyone around him is discouraging him, Paul's using his influence to encourage him and to speak life where there's death in his life. Amen. So Paul, because he was able to invest that time, he earned the right for his words to have value in Timothy's life. Sometimes we want to speak wisdom to people, but we don't put in that time and effort of actually building a relationship with them. So we think, like, oh, we've, we've got the thing to fix things in their life. But it doesn't carry value because there's not a relationship. There's not that trusting relationship that's been built to back up the words. So it is so easy 
to come, hear the sermon, and leave. It's really easy. You can check that box off real fast. You know, we're going to go to lunch. It's going to be great. What's harder is to invest time, effort, and money into something. So what would it look like for us to be influencers here at Granite Creek? And I'm not talking about the smash that like button kind of influencer. I'm talking about the, the kind of influencer that invests relationally into other people. So maybe this means sacrificing some time to disciple someone, to build that relationship so that you can speak life into them. Every time I disciple a student, I leave better than I came to that discussion with. So this iron sharpens iron concept, I see that so strongly in discipling with students. Because I pour into them, yes, but they are also teaching me something and pouring into me. I really believe that one-on-ones with students is where the real magic happens because it's where we're able to be more open and real. Because sometimes talking with a group, even a small group, especially if you're like a quieter person like me, it's scary and it's a lot of trust to put into a lot of people. But one-on-ones, that's where real good relationships are built. So maybe investing relationally in other people means joining a serving team. Serving builds unique relationships with people. There's some like common bond that you get when you serve and do hard stuff together. Growing up, I grew, um, I, was, I was serving a lot. And I served a lot specifically with my close friends and that really deepened our relationship. For some reason, I said yes to serving in the nursery. If you know anything about me, I don't, do sticky. I'm with the junior hires and high schoolers for a reason. <laughs> so somehow, my best friend Ashley, once again, the Lola girl, man, I should send this to her. She was like, you talk a lot about me. Um, she got me to volunteer in the nursery with her. And man, we had such bonding experiences, like trauma building right there. I was like, yes, yeah, so are we doing the changing diapers? Cool, awesome. But serving builds relationships. And I am closer to the, the people that I served with in my youth group and in my time growing up than the ones I did not serve with. We just had those common things with one another. But it also made me make new friends too. Like it was, I went to serve with my friends, but there's other people that I built really strong relationships with as well. So maybe investing relationally with other people means opening your home for the next youth event. Just kidding. Or am I? Or am I? Perhaps you relate more to the come, leave, and listen person. Maybe, so maybe for you, being an influencer means taking that first step relationally and actually coming to a small group or Bible study meeting. For some people, that might sound terrifying. I know for me, like that's, it, sounds, it sounds scary to go somewhere you are not familiar with. I know I usually want to know at least one person in a room that I'm going to to make me feel more comfortable. But I want to encourage you that taking that first step is so important. And you are worth getting to know. So put yourself in a situation where people can get to know you, can hear your stories. But part of the success of our youth group, I believe, is due to them being in community. See, I, as their youth pastor, can only see all of these things that God is doing in the youth group because I know them, because I've seen this transformation. And we can't be known if we are not in community. So who do you need to be sharpened by? Let's revisit that verse, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Who do you need to be sharpened by? Do you need to plug in community? Are you hearing this and thinking, like, man, I'm not being sharpened by anyone? Your stories and your life experience is something that can influence other people. And it's a story that is unique to you, and only you can share that. 
I can't tell you how many times I've heard people's testimonies and it's moved me to deeper faith because maybe I don't have a healing story myself, but boy, do I have a catalog of so many other people because I listen to their stories and people are willing to tell their stories. Community is so important. We can build our faith so much deeper just by hearing how God is working in one another's lives. So do you need to plug into community? Are you already plugged in? Yay, keep doing it. But we, and we still need you. And I want to challenge you to dive even deeper. and Maybe connect with someone who's of a different generation from you. Ask them about their life, what their dreams are, what their greatest accomplishments are. We can learn so much from each other. And I know that sometimes it's hard to connect with people of different generations because you're like, they just don't understand me. And sure, there might be some awkward moments where you know, you're like, what, is this? what are you saying to me? I'm not quite sure what that phrase means. But then it's kind of fun because you can be like, oh, well, here's the slang that we use now. I don't know. Um, we were playing a game. I cannot remember what the name was. But it was a game, one of those like battle of the generation type games. And I thought it was ridiculous. But then it was actually like, wow, this is kind of interesting. Because there was stuff from like, I don't even know how far back it went. But to where my grandparents could probably say it, but then my parents could say things, and I could say things, and then there was even some things that were from like our youth group, and I was playing with my family over this Christmas, and it was hilarious. My dad's like, that's not a real word. I was like, yes it is, <laughs> yes it is, and here's how you use it in a sentence. <laughs> So it's fascinating because we really can learn stuff. And like, likewise, I was thinking, like, what the heck does that mean, Mom? And she's like, well, when I was in high school, this is what we would use. I'm like, cool, cool. So we really do learn from each other. Silly things like just generational phrases, but also just the deep stuff like, hey, how can I avoid this kind of chaos in my life? Because those that are older have a lot of experience, and we can help teach one another just things that you've learned and how maybe people that are younger than you can avoid the mistakes that you've made. We need to communicate with one another. We need to be influencing one another. Band, if I can start to have you guys come on up. We have the ability to be influencers wherever we are. All of the stories that I shared were just a few examples of how our youth have been influenced by experiences and how they have become influential in our youth group, but also the church community. And I could not be more proud of them and how God is using them. It is incredible to see how God uses them throughout the years. See, our youth, they take risks, they do the hard things, and they are all in. So my question for you is, are you? Ushers, if I can have you guys start coming up as well. So like I said, Pastor Mako introduced our pledge cards last week. And she invited us to take it home and pray about how you want to, to commit for the next, I think it's the next year. And I don't really like talking about money. That's not something that I'm a fan of. But I think that this whole, this whole sermon this morning was my hope to cast some vision for you, a vision of what church can be and what community can really look like. And it takes cost, cost relationally, but cost also financially to make this kind of community happen. So I want to encourage you to pour back financially into what the Lord is already doing here. He can do it with or without our money. Money just helps us make fun stuff happen, honestly. I mean, that's a youth perspective. Um, we can do cool, crazy events like murder mystery nights. Um, super fun. But these things that connect us with experiences and relationally so that we can have those deep conversations later because you can't have deep conversations if there's not a trusting relationship there. You can't speak life into people. Like, remember, Paul's words would not have been carrying that weight 
if they didn't have a relationship behind them. So let's pray over the the, uh, offering this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for for giving us everything, Lord. It is yours. It is not ours. So God, I just pray that you bless this this campus, bless this building, bless every single person who, who steps on it, every single person who walks online, every person who calls this church their home, Lord. God, we just ask for a heart of being all in for you, God. All in relationally, all in financially, all in for your kingdom, God. So, Lord, we just ask that you bless this offering to you, Lord. May it do kingdom work beyond our wildest imaginations, Lord. God, we entrust it to you, knowing that you are going to do big things with it, God. We thank you and we praise you. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much that we have the opportunity to come to your table as a community, as disciples in you, Lord, stretching all the way from that first table, Lord. We thank you that we get to remember the sacrifice that you gave so that we can be in community and be free in you, Lord. God, we ask for your presence to be with us. We praise you. In your name we pray, amen. So may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, and may he make his face shine upon you. And may you become even more deeply ingrained in this community that you call home. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for worshiping with us. Have a good week.